welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Rudy. Thank you so much for being here. <sighs> I gotta save my breath because today is a big video. Today we are doing our Sephora Springs savings event recommendations. This is probably like the fifth time that I've done this video on this channel and um, I'm very excited and every year I say like I'm gonna try and narrow things down as much as I can. It's impossible. It's literally impossible. But I will say this year I found that a lot of the favorites that I've been liking and using in general in my routine are actually Ulta or Drugstore or Target. Things like Naturium, Prequel, like some of the like I've been wearing the Kylie Jenner perfume a lot. Like I just noticed that okay Ulta you like you kind of have a lot of stuff going for you right now. However we still have a full video for the Sephora sale. If you're new here, as I said, my name is Rudy and we talk about skincare, makeup, hair care. We're gonna cover all of that here today in suggestions. The sale this year is starting on April 5th and it runs through April 15th. There are different tiers for the different levels of membership at Sephora. So Rouge is gonna start on the 5th with 20% off. Uh, VIB starts on the 9th with 15% off and then Beauty Insider starts on the 9th as well with 10% off. So if you need any of the actual information, I will have all of it listed below in the description as well as the code for checkout, which I believe is yay save this spring. I also feel like I have to share this every time, which is that I have done this video so many times now that if there is something that's not in this video that you are curious about, I highly recommend you check my other recommendations recommendations because they still stand up. So basically what I try and do when I am filming these videos is show you new things that have popped up in the last six months. So because there's the Sephora spring sale and the Sephora fall sale, I try to bookend those with new things that whatever comes out in between is what I'm sharing essentially, unless I feel like it is a holy grail and there's just nothing that can beat it, which there are certainly some products in here that continue to reign supreme like year after year, sale after sale. But in general, I try to really mix it up and add in some new recommendations so that if you're looking for new things, you have them. But again, if you want something, or an opinion on something that maybe I've already talked about or recommended, it's probably in one of the past videos. Also, I did uh, my makeup using all of the products that we're going to talk about today. Obviously not all of them because I could not physically put them all on my face, but if I have a video of me using them, I will have my editor pop it in so that you can see what it looks like on the skin, but I really tried to utilize as many products as I could. I think the look turned out really beautiful. This is kind of what I've been going for every day recently, so I think it makes a ton of sense with uh, these products. We're going to talk about primers, you know, coverage, all the way to lips and eyes, down to some of my hair favorites, a perfume favorite, some skincare, SPF. So we've got a lot to cover. So let us dive in. Okay. So usually I do these videos by category and we start with, you know, what I'm starting on my face and then we'll end with hair because I know a lot of people come to my channel for makeup recommendations over other things. So we'll end with hair, perfume, skincare. So let's start with makeup and we're going to start the video with our primers and our prep steps there. If you go look at my past videos, you'll see like I have a very easy, like when I'm prepping my makeup, I only want to do basically one thing before I put on my foundation or concealer, which is hydrate my skin. So whether that's with a spray or a toner or a gel or a serum, like I really only want to do the one thing because I typically have a good amount of time between my skincare, which I do downstairs, and then my makeup when I come upstairs. So when I come up here and I feel like my skin's a little bit dry and I need to prep it, this is what I have been using almost every single day since this came out. And this is the new Glow Recipe Watermelon Glow Niacinamide Hue Drops in the shade Sun Glow. I think these are my favorite bronzing drops on the market. I do have a plan of doing a full review or like comparison video of all of the different bronzing drops because there are so many. But for some reason, this one is really, really special to me. In my last video, I did a, a swatch of this next to the Say Glowy Super Gel. And this one came off a little bit warmer, a little bit more sheer and I just find that it, it sits beautifully under all of my products that I like to use on the daily. It not only hydrates the skin, it gives it a little bit of a glow. It has niacinamide to help brighten the skin, which if you are sensitive to niacinamide, keep that in mind. And it also adds that bronze look to the skin, which I always am trying to achieve, especially as it gets warmer out. So I did not have any expectations to love this product, but I absolutely do. Um, and I think these are my favorite bronzing drops and they have been the primer I have been using for the past couple months. So I feel like this is the one I had to shout out. 
And with the other prep that I do, essentially, it's just a little bit of lip prep and a little bit of face prep. So this is the current combo that I have been obsessing over. This is the Refi Lip Buff and this is the Nude Sticks um, Hydropeptide Lip Butter. This is my favorite lip uh, exfoliant ever. It is a physical exfoliant, so it has this little plastic tip that's kind of like silicone tip and it has a like hyaluronic acid serum that comes out of the middle of it. So it actually is hydrating your lips and plumping them with the fine lines and wrinkles from hyaluronic acid while also getting rid of some of the dead skin on your lips. So I put this on, I kind of rub it around for a little bit, I wipe off any of the dead skin and then I apply just a clear product that is going to hydrate my lips and last while I'm getting ready but is not so sticky that I can't get it off to apply whatever I want to next. And this one is a great option for lip prep or for topping any other lip products because it's thin, it's lightweight, it does have a minty feel to it so keep that in mind but I am obsessed with these. I like these not quite as much as the Rose lip treatments, but um, very, very close second, and the clear shade is gorgeous. Let's get into our coverage, okay? I have three skin tints to mention and one foundation. Two of these skin tints are repeats because I just can't imagine anything being better than them. And you can probably guess, say it with me, it's the Summer Fridays and the Hourglass. This year, my favorite skin tint, and it, as you can see, it won the Berry Best Award, was the Hourglass uh, Hydrating Skin Tint Veil. This is a thicker formula. People always ask me like, which one of these should I get? And I typically say, if you're oily, go for Summer Fridays. If you're dry, go for Hourglass. If you're in between, honestly, either one could go. I like using both of these depending on the day, if I'm feeling dry or if I'm feeling oily. The Summer Fridays is probably my always like top favorite. Like these are pretty much tied at this point, but I wear this mostly in the summer because it is so thin and lightweight. And I wear this one mostly in the winter because it's got a thicker consistency to it. So because we're getting into warmer weather with spring, I definitely recommend you trying out the Summer Fridays. It is just so beautiful. For it being a thin, lightweight formula, it really hydrates the skin, gives it a beautiful glow and looks incredible incredibly natural. These are both absolute winners. I've never met someone who didn't like these. Um, if you like the type of makeup I do, which is what I have on right now, I just really recommend you try one of these this summer. Um, but I did want to mention neither of these have SPF. So if you are a person who needs SPF in your skin tint because maybe you're a little lazy with your skincare in the morning or you just prefer it, I did want to mention the new Super Goop Protect Tint. Um, this is an SPF 50 from them. This is a new skin tint. The range is really, really nice. I wear the shade 24 N. I'll have everything linked down below as well with my shades um, so that you can shop whenever you're ready. But I am really, really loving this. I've been wearing this a lot because it has been strangely super warm out in Nashville. And I, I literally got a sunburn last week. But this basically is just a really, really lightweight, almost a little bit thicker than the Summer Fridays, not quite as thick as the Hourglass. Um, and it is a mineral and chemical sunscreen, so it's a hybrid. It doesn't have like a real sunscreen scent. I know that the Ilia Super Serum Skin Tint bothers a lot of people because it has a really strong smell. This does not have that. So if you're looking for something that gives you light dewy coverage, it's very light, but it still gives you a little bit of something and it has an SPF 50. I recommend trying this out. I was really impressed by it and I was surprised at how much I liked it because there are some super good products for me that are a win, win, win. And then there are others that I'm like, not sure about it all, but that one is really, really good. Okay, getting into our concealer categories. I have three here that I have not been in past videos because they're all, again, pretty new. And I did want to mention that I feel like when I first started my channel, I was looking for really lightweight, which I still am, but lightweight, glowy, like light coverage concealer. So my favorite concealer was um, from Tarte and it doesn't exist anymore. And I was always looking for like the right one that would match that for me. And now as I'm getting into my thirties and you know, my makeup style is changing a little bit, I am preferring slightly more coverage with a natural finish, but something that gives that brightening effect to the skin. So keep that in mind as we go through these. Um, oh, I forgot to mention my favorite foundation. Let me do that first. Sorry, you can already guess what it is. I have it on today. This is the one that I picked. This is probably gonna be my very best award winner for the year because I just can't imagine a foundation being prettier than this. And that is the Makeup Forever HD Skin Hydra Glow. I had the original of this, just the HD skin, and I always really liked it, but I felt like it was a slightly too matte for me in the winter um, and just not quite as glowy as I like it. This foundation is perfect. It is so beautiful. It wears so well. I wear shade 2N22. It is a perfect match for me. It goes so well with the watermelon drops, like these two together. Oh my gosh. It's just stunning. 
It's absolutely stunning. It's got like a serum-y consistency to it. Obviously, it's gonna give you more coverage than a skin tint, but it's not so much coverage that you look cakey. It's got a really beautiful, glowy, natural finish to it. I just highly, 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 highly recommend it. This is by far my favorite foundation I think I've ever tried, which is crazy. So I've tried a lot. Getting into the concealers, as I mentioned, I don't always include a brightener when I'm talking about my recommendations from Sephora, but this year I am because this was one that I was really impressed with. And this is the new Cali Ray Hideaway Under Eye Brightener. So I have mine here in the shade Dawn, which is a super light pink, almost like a purpley undertone. And I've had like a pretty hard last couple weeks just generally. And so I haven't been sleeping very well. And when I'm not sleeping, my under eyes look insane and sometimes a light medium coverage is just not going to cut it and that's when I pull this thing in because it gives you the most beautiful lightweight skin-like brightening effect that sometimes I don't even need a concealer with it so if I am sleeping well and things are going well I don't even need a concealer but I like to mix these two shades also these are glass like slay this one is in the shade golden hour and this one's in the shade dawn and it's basically like the perfect under eye shade that gives you insane brightening. You could use this on other areas of the face. It comes in other brightening shades for different skin tones, depending on what you'd like to cover. I would love to see them come out with a green one because I think this is absolutely amazing. And this pink shade specifically is so good under my eyes. I don't think I have a brightener that I like quite as much as this one. Like I'm looking in my cabinet and I'm like, no, I think this one is legitimately my favorite. I love Cali Ray and I think that they're doing a lot of cool stuff this year. I actually got to try this when I was in um, LA last time and I went to the Cali Ray office, which is literally a beach house across the street from a beach. And I just thought it was amazing. So I wanted to recommend it. I don't feel like it's gotten enough love and it is truly that girl. All right, for concealers, we have got a classic lightweight concealer and then we have something a little bit heavier, but still in the vein of what we would typically go for you and me that I think you're going to love. So let's start with this lighter weight one. This is one that you may have heard me talk about if you've been here for a while. I went to France this summer with my husband. I found a few things at Sephora that were not in the US and I was like, what the hell? Like these are amazing. One of them being this concealer, which is now available in the US Sephora. This is the Best Skin Ever Glow Concealer. This is the one that I got while I was in France. So if it looks a little bit different, that's probably why. I wear shade 26 and this kind of reminds me of my favorite Hydra Sealer, which was my favorite concealer before it got discontinued because it's super lightweight. It's really, really thin and it just has a really beautiful like moisturized texture to it that leaves a really nice glow. So if you're looking for, I'm a light coverage girly or boy and I need just a little bit of brightening and a little bit of moisture under my eyes to bring a bit of glow to my skin, I think it's perfectly paired with a lighter skin tint or in summer days, this is the one for you. I really, really, really like it. I'm so glad that this line is now in the US. I will say there's also a foundation that goes with this that's so good, but they haven't brought it over yet. So for now, all we have is the concealer. And if you like a light coverage, glowy finish, I recommend trying this one. And it's also very inexpensive because it is Sephora collection. And I think that those will even be more percentage off. I think it's going to be like 30% off. So highly recommend checking that out as well as the new slip tint concealer from say beauty. So as you can see, mine says launching 319 on it because they sent it to me like over a month ago to begin testing. And I remember the first time I tried it on, I was like, I literally thought I hated it because I'm so used to say, releasing really lightweight, thin, like almost dewy, greasy products that I was like expecting that. And I put a lot on and I quickly realized like a little goes a long way and you actually don't need a lot to get a really, really hydrated, beautiful under eye. The next time I used it, I was like, I'm fully obsessed. This is a really great sort of medium coverage concealer that is not going to give you too much glow, but it can stand on its own, if that makes sense. If I were to, you know, think of anything that it would remind me of, I would say maybe the Colfi concealer, which I also love and has a higher coverage level than my typical concealers, but this one does have slightly more coverage, but I don't know if you can tell, especially paired with the Cali Ray, like these two together really do give you a really beautiful sort of flattened, brightened under eye. And um, when I pair these together, I feel completely unstoppable. Again, this is gonna give you more of a natural finish than it is that super dewy, sh like their other concealer is. I actually like this one a lot more and I think it could also work as a foundation or a skin tint all over the face. The only thing I don't like about it is the actual applicator gets really, really gunked up 
um, because the hole is a little bit too big. So just be careful when you're putting it on because like I said, a little goes a long way, but this might be my favorite launch from Say in quite some time. Okay, we are fully covered at this point. The coverage is on and it's, it's in, but we need to lock it in. This is a powder that I have been fully addicted to and I think was my recommendation in the fall as well. And that is the Huda Beauty Easy Bake and Snatch pressed powder, specifically in the shade Cherry Blossom Cake. This is well loved. I will say you can tell that mine has a bit of hard pan because I use it so often, but fixing hard pan is actually not that, it's not that hard. You can just take a, like a Kleenex and do this and get the top layer off and then literally look at that. It's good as new. I just, I've been lazy and I haven't wanted to do it. But this product is really, really special for multiple reasons. So I love that this comes with a full mirror and a little puff inside. This puff is actually completely usable, like it works quite well. But I love that this is a fragrance-free version of their loose powder because the pink loose powder is a beautiful shade, but it smells like straight up flowers. Whereas this one is completely scentless and because it's pressed, it is so finely milled that I've really been liking using it to brighten up the under eye and add a little bit, especially if I'm going out, just add a little bit to um, the chin and the forehead just to help sort of flatten those areas a little bit as it gets hotter out because my skin is going to break through that powder anyways. So giving it one extra layer is going to help your makeup just last longer in general. It feels weightless on the skin. And again, if you have dark under eyes, this is a great powder to set with. I really, really love it. And again, it's the one that I continue reaching for like every single day. It's the one I've been traveling with and it comes in a bunch of shades, not just pink if you have other concerns. So I, I only have one bronzer recommendation, but I have like five blush so we're gonna even it out obviously you guys know that my favorite bronzer is the makeup by mario bronzing balm the like skin perfector and that one will always be like number one for me but this one is like steadily creeping up to being number one as well i believe this was my very best award winner from this year and this is the simi haze bronzing balm i have mine this skin suede melting bronze balm sorry and I have mine in the shade Oak. This is my perfect bronzer in terms of shade, in terms of the compact, in terms of the formula. Like, I love this bronzer. It's a little bit darker than my typical shade for the Makeup by Mario, but because it is a balm, like, you can blend this and like it, I don't know if you could tell in my video that it took me literally one second to blend it into my skin. And that's what I'm talking about. Like I now have this look down in about 20 minutes. And it's because of products like this where I can just slap it on. It is truly so easy. And because it's a balm, it's not super pigmented. It's not gonna be super opaque. And with that balmy texture, it gives you a really natural finish to the skin. It doesn't have any shimmer in it. It's not super dry like a cream to powder. And it's not as pigmented as a typical cream cream would like the tower 28 creams i love them but you can get a little out of hand with them with this you cannot you cannot mess it up i'm telling you you cannot mess it up i love the packaging it's so thin it's really easy to travel with and if you haven't tried a bronzing balm in general whether it's this one um the one from merit or the one from makeup by mario i highly recommend it i think it will change the game for you now for blushes i thought that it was appropriate for me to give you a category in every single kind of blush that you can have so here we are we've got four categories we have a cream blush, um, a liquid blush, a powder blush, and a lip and cheek stain category for our recommendations. I'm going to start with the liquid blush because as you know, I'm really not a liquid girly. I've never been a liquid girly. It's not for me typically, but if there's a good formula and the colors make sense for me, I can do it. And the Sealy or the Seal, I think it's Sealy, whatever these are called, they're incredible. So this brand is um, a fully SPF based brand. So every single product that they made, that they make has SPF in it. This one is SPF 50 and these are blushes. They are the best SPF blushes I've ever tried. I'm actually testing out their bronzers right now. They just came out with these and these are SPF 30. I'll let you know. These are their newer shades, specifically in the shade June. That's the one I have on today. If I were to be creating a blush, I would base it off of this shade and then tweak, like, tweak it a little bit because this is like my perfect terracotta brown, purpley reddish shade of like, you're a little sunburnt, you're a little sun-kissed. It is so good that I wear this at night. 
I wear this like every single day even though it's SPF 50 because I'm like I don't even think about the fact that it's SPF 50 because I love it that much um, it's also super easy to blend as you can see from that video I like to use a flatter angled brush also I just realized in the video where I was putting all this makeup on I was one wearing a sweater but then I got hot and also I was only wearing one earring <laughs> There aren't that many shades of this line yet, but January and June are my favorite. I like to mix them together. And if you're looking for SPF makeup, you should just look at that brand in its entirety because the skin tint they make is also really, really, really nice. Um, it didn't make this video because I have two skin tints that I just can't live without, but the blushes, incred, incred. So for cream blush, I feel like I'm always comparing any blush product to the Tower 28 blushes, the Beach Peas Beach please blushes and I finally found a formula that made sense for me to introduce it as a recommendation in this video and it is the brand new Basma cream blushes or Basma I think it's Basma um they're literally just called the cream blush and this is in the shade mauve these are beautiful they remind me of the tower 28 blushes they've got a really nice balmy texture to them they're not too pigmented in fact like they're quite a bit less pigmented than the tower 28 they remind me more of a balm and less of a cream which as you know i'm so down for so the pigment is really buildable it's really easy to use i think it comes in about five shades but honestly for me all of the shades were a little too bright too pink too coral there was a red shade as well but this one in mauve is perfect absolutely perfect you have light to light medium skin I say try this shade there are a couple others if you have interest but specifically the shade mauve it's like an everyday perfect pink I have it on the apples of my cheeks today along with that Sealy blush and also it's really fun to play with like the packaging is really cute I haven't tried anything from this brand in a really long time and I wasn't sure how I was going to feel about these but I'm really got, glad I tried them because they give a really nice beautiful sheen of that glow without any glitter shimmer not too much pigment really easy to use then of course we have our powder blush category these are new but they're old um and i'm so glad that they're back because i can finally talk about them which is the house labs um color fuse blushes so i had been recommending this shade so these came out and for some reason like a year ago they were limited edition don't ask this is how big they were and this is my favorite shade in hibiscus haze it's like a beautiful mid-toned pink it is the perfect blush, but I could never recommend it because it was limited edition. So they came back with them and they made the packaging much, much smaller and Hibiscus Haze is still in this line. So I wanted to call out two other shades that I felt like were my favorites. This little brown shade is in Fire Moon. This is a perfect addition to any like bronzer. And then this is called French Rosette and it has a little bit more of a coral undertone. But even still with these, the my favorite shade is hibiscus haze i kept my big one and i gave away my little one because i'm like i'll just go through this one the formula is the same but the packaging is much smaller and it's easier to tell what shade you're going for so these are beautiful they're matte but they're really really blendable and easy to use and they don't feel heavy on the skin so i'm so glad that those are back in my routine all right we are getting down to um products that i like these are kind of lip and cheek products so i'm gonna go into lips after this and then we'll talk about eyes because these are also products that I use on my lips. So this category is like what I would consider to be the stain category. I love lip stains. I love cheek stains. I love Korean lip stains. I love the lip jellies. Like anything that has a lasting power, I am immediately drawn to it. And these are by far my favorites on the market. So first and foremost, obviously the Benetint is my number one favorite stain of all time. It's just the perfect shade. It works on everybody. It's the perfect lip color under every single lipstick, lip liner, lip gloss. Like I use this almost every day just to give a little more pigment to my lips, but I don't use it quite as much on my cheeks because it is a literal liquid and can be a little bit hard to blend. So when Milk came out with these cooling water jelly tints, I was like, oh, okay, slay. I talked about these in a video recently and I said I liked them, but they have definitely been growing on me since then. Today I'm wearing the shade Chill on my lips before I went in with my lip liner. And these are a lot easier to manage on the cheeks than the Benetint. So if you're looking for like a really unique, beautiful stain, this is definitely it. I mean, they're so innovative and beautiful. They give you a really, really 
really nice flush of color on the lips. My other favorite shade is Burst, which is a more purple shade, but I still have to say that the Benetton is my favorite in terms of colors. Like I wish that these were a little bit less super bright and had a little bit more of like a neutral undertone, but that might be hard to do in a stain. I'm honestly not sure. Yeah, I've been using these a ton. I love them on my lips. I love them on my cheeks. And then obviously the Benetton I use constantly. I actually have the jumbo size here because mama can't live without it. I have a travel size and I have one at home that is a big girl. Which speaking of lip liners, after I use a stain, I typically stain and then line because once you get the stain down, I wanna make sure it's like fully covering my lips and I don't want the liquid of the stain to break down my lip liner. So I put on the stain, I let it sit, and then I apply a pencil liner. And I know that the last couple videos I've been recommending the Makeup Forever liners, but right now my full obsession is the pencil liners from Anastasia Beverly Hills, specifically in the shade Raisin and Dusty Rose. I'm wearing one of these like every Every day either a neutral and dusty rose or if I want to amp up my look a little bit I'm using raisin which is what I have on today it's just like the perfect brownish purplish sort of undertone that's not too dark it's really blendable but it's also very like I don't know once it's on it's on I definitely prefer a pencil sort of a uh, liner over anything else. I love the MAC liners. I love the Makeup Forever liners. I love the Tower 28 one liners. I mean, if you can find a shade in one of the ones that I just said, that's like an actual pencil, I think you will be satisfied. But particularly these two shades have been really doing it for me within my makeup routine. So this one is in Dusty Rose. So as you can see, it's like a tad bit lighter, but still has that like deep neutral undertone to it to help accentuate the lip line. But I cannot live without Raisin. Raisin and Benetint together, I'm like, yeah, give it to me, it's so good. We have a couple different categories in our lip products um, that I wanted to recommend. We have a lip treatment, we have a lip glaze, jelly, question mark, and we have a lip oil. As you know, or if you don't know me, I am not a lipstick person. I have not worn a matte lipstick in probably a year, I'm just, I'm not a lipstick person and if I do wear lipstick, it's gonna be sheer, it's gonna be lightweight or it's gonna be like a blotted matte one. But it's it's pretty rare for me to do that. I'm mostly a liner gloss girl or a lip treatment type of person and I can say with confidence that I have found my number one favorite lip treatment and it is the brand new Pout Preserves from Ulla Henriksen. I've talked about these before so I'm not gonna go into too much detail but for multiple reasons, these are elite. One, the colors that they offer, this is just two out of four of the shades that they have, are wearable and similar enough to the other ones that are on the market without being identical. So like think Saltaire literally duped Rhodes exact shades. They didn't do that. Like these shades are unique to this line, but still wearable and very beautiful. They're super hydrating. They're thick. They wrap around the lips. They last for hours and they have a sheer transparent base. So they work on anyone's lips. They don't have like a milky undertone that's going to give off like, like a Tyrone Bigums look. Like it's everything that I love about a lip treatment they have in this. It's also slightly scented, not too much, but each of them have their own scent, which gives them their own like experience and feeling. My favorite shades are the ones I have here, which this is in Cocoa Cream. It's like a nice brownish shade. I'll pop in the swatches as well. And then of course this one in Strawberry Sorbet, which is my number one favorite from the line. It also comes in a clear shade, which is what I wear at night. So literally it's unbeatable. You absolutely must try them. They are so iconic and I hope that they continue making more. So the reason I like don't know how to categorize this product is because it's like this new product style that's coming out that's kind of like a lip gloss, a lip oil, but also a lip treatment. Kind of like the Milk Odyssey lip oil glosses. Like these, these brands don't know what to call these products anymore because they're just like pushing the envelope, which I love. And the winner in this strange innovative category for me is the House Labs PhD or yeah, PhD Hybrid Lip Glaze. Again, weird name, but it's hard to pin down what this product really is. It's kind of like a lip gloss, but it has more pigment than a lip gloss. It's kind of like a lip oil, but it's not as thin as a lip oil. It's kind of like a lip treatment, but it has more pigment than a lip treatment. So what do you call it? I guess a lip glaze. These are stunning. These are beautiful on their own. They're thick. They have a good amount of pigment. My favorite shade is in Fig, but I also love the shade Persimmon. They're easy to wear. Um, they're easy to put on anywhere at any time. They look amazing with liners or on their own, popped on top of a matte lipstick. Like there's really nothing wrong that you can do with these. And in my opinion, this is like an updated version of 
something like the Merit lip oils. I used to think that these were the best of the best and now since brands are expanding and coming out with more types of products, I can see why this is just so much better in my opinion. So highly recommend trying this out if you haven't, if you're looking for a more pigmented version of like a lip treatment that is more like maybe nighttime or like you wanna wear out that you don't have to reapply quite as much. Now we are in the lip oil category. These are new and Again, with a lip oil, you're gonna get a little less pigment, you're gonna get more shine, you're gonna get a little bit less wear time, but still really beautiful. And these are new from Summer Fridays. These are the Dream Lip Oils. Today I'm wearing the shade Blush Dreams on top of the stain and the liner. This is like my sort of perfect nude when it comes to a lip oil. And these are so nice. They've got a really nice cushiony feel to them. It's a little bit thin for my typical like lip treatment sort of category, but for a lip oil, it's perfect because it feels weightless on the lips. It gives you a beautiful shine and I love the shades. I have a video where I have, I'm putting them all on, but every single shade is beautiful in its own way. These two look similar, but this one is actually a lot more of a mauve where this one is more of a nude. There's a darker shade and a really nice pink. And I just love everything Summer Fridays does. I hope that they continue to expand their makeup because it's just beautiful and this lip oil, look at it. Look how shiny it is. It feels like nothing on the lips. It has a slight, just a slight menthol taste and feeling to it, but for the most part, it just feels hydrated and thin and nice and it's not too sticky. Like you're not gonna get it stuck in your hair. It's just beautiful and it makes you want to reapply it. So that was my lip category. Woo! So we have the lip oils, the lip glaze, the lip treatment, the lip liner, and the lip stain. I hope to God you find something in that that works for you. God bless. Let's round out our makeup choices with are talking about some eye makeup before we get into our skincare, hair care, and our perfume. So for our eyeshadow this year, um, I do believe that this is the choice I had last fall as well, and it will probably continue to be so because these are so good. Um, these are the Merit Solo Shadows, and everything about this product is perfection. The packaging is perfection. Like, it's so beautiful. It's so compact. The shades are absolute perfection. I have, like, I don't know, seven of them. That's how much I like them. However, I continue to wear the same one every single day, which is the one I have on today in the shade Studio, which is a brown, mauve gray. It's like a cooler toned brown that really just looks so natural and just emphasizes your makeup. Absolutely stunning. These are so easy to use. You can use a brush, you can use your finger. They're a cream to powder formula, which is really great for beginners. And if you're just like an on the go type of person, these are gonna be a lot easier for you than using a liquid eyeshadow. However, if you are more advanced and you wanna play around with liquid, um, I have yet another House Labs recommendation. That's three products. Geez, these are the high power pigment paints. Um, my perfect and favorite shade is rose gold shimmer. I don't think it's rose gold shimmer. I think it's bronze shimmer, but whatever. This is my perfect like pop of shimmer in the middle of the eye shade. I prefer to use liquid shades like this on my eye rather than a powder because you get that really beautiful like reflect effect without any of the fallout because it's in a cream. This does dry down, but as you can see, it has the really beautiful shimmer flex in it. And this on the center of the lid, I mean, it's just perfection. If you like a really like lightweight, sort of wet looking lid with glitter, ooh, you have got to try that one. I feel like those products from House Labs are underrated and no one ever talks about them, but like, I don't know if you can see, just stunning, stunning. And with Studio, like that is a duo. These two together, it's just like a shimmery brown goodness. Ugh. Amazing. Also lasts forever. Like I'm not gonna have this. It's gonna be on my hands all night. Mascara. This is a category that's gonna be a little hard for me because I just made my own mascara this year and it is literally my baby angel and I love it so much. So I've been wearing my own mascara now for like six months. However, this is the first mascara that I have found that I was like, oh my God, this is so innovative and different and I love it. And it is the new Refi Lash Sculpt. Um, I have a short on this that you probably saw because I said it looks like the Grim Reaper from the Sims and it does, but I am fully obsessed with this. I know not everyone has liked this because it's so funky and weird, but being selfish, this brush is my exact eye shape. So it's, it's a rounded brush like this and it's synth synthetic, but when you put it up against your eye, it matches the, the curvature of your eye my eye perfectly because I have very round, large eyes. So it makes it really easy to just get into every little crook. Um, however, I have a lot of friends and 
colleagues in the space who have smaller eyes, just different eye shapes where this does not work for them. But this is the mascara effect that I always wanted to get from the Glossier mascara. Like, I love the Lash Lick um, when the time is right, but this gives me more of a satisfying feeling of wearing an almost barely there mascara while still giving length and still giving like, I don't know, it's just so satisfying to wear. It's not tubing, so if that's something you wanna know, it's a regular mascara, and I really, really, really like it. Like, I know it's weird and it's a little funky, but to me and for my eye shape, I love it. I love how fluttery it is. This is not a volumizing mascara, this is a lengthening mascara, and I am totally fine with that. I think it's super innovative, and I, I like when brands try funky stuff. Okay, so for eyebrows, you already know my choice for eyebrow is the Rare Beauty Eyebrow Gel. I literally just emptied out two of these and I have one backup, so uh, I will definitely be ordering more of these for the sale. It's the best eyebrow gel ever if you like a laminated eyebrow. I have it on today and it's what I use every single day to fully laminate my eyebrows to my head and to get this super fluffy look, but they don't move. They're crunchy, which I've mentioned. I like a crunchy eyebrow. Um, I don't want them to flutter around on my face. I want them to stay exactly where they are and that's what this is going to do to you. If you are like someone who had been using the got to be gel on your brows, it's time to try this because I'm telling you, you're going to love it. And also if you're a person who just doesn't have a lot of eyebrow, you know I'm always recommending the Grande Brow. You can get this during the sale as well. This is a brow enhancing serum. I know that Grande Cosmetics has a lot of like stuff going on with their eyelash serums. I don't use the eyelash serums. I only use the brow. This has helped me regrow the tail of my eyebrows. Um, if you know me, you know that I have plucked this tail off my eyebrow so many times that I was convinced it was never going to come back. And this baby brought it back. You have to use it every single night. So like I have a travel size as well because it does accumulate over time. Like you can't really miss it or it will stop working. Um, but if you do and you are dedicated to the growth of your eyebrows, this is going to get you there. It works so well. Um, and it has not irritated my skin or my face at all. Okay, you guys, that was all the makeup. Good lord, that was a lot. Oh, well, there's kind of one more thing. Setting spray. I obviously, like, I'm a huge fan. Same for the primers, like, the Milk Hydro Grip line. If you need stuff to stay on forever and ever, amen. Highly recommend. But I've talked about it into the ground, and this is one that I didn't try until recently, and it had such good recommendations. It's the Airb Airbrush Flawless Setting Spray from... Uh, Charlotte Tilbury. I would usually not go for this, like just because I, I had never really heard anything about it, but I saw my friend Rachel put this on, dunk herself in a hot tub and come out and her makeup still looks perfect. And I was like, hmm, maybe I should try that. And now I've been using it like every single day because it also gives you a slight glow to your skin. So I don't know if you noticed that I did not mention a highlighter in this video. I have not been impressed with a, with a highlighter from Sephora in a while and I just didn't feel like it would make sense for me to talk about one because I literally haven't been wearing one. Instead, what I've been doing is dousing myself in some spray at the end of every routine that I do, and it just gives you that natural lit from within glow without having to actually apply an actual highlighter on top. So I'm really loving this. It hasn't irritated my skin. It's got, I don't even know, a very light scent, and it works super well. So highly, highly impressed with that one if you haven't tried it. Let's get into some skincare. We don't have too much in terms of skincare, hair care, or perfume because I wanted to make sure this video wasn't 100 years long. However, I I think I'm going to do a video or like a story series on my Instagram where I ask you guys what recommendations you need from the sale based on what you're specifically looking for. Like if you're like dry skin, concealer, medium coverage, like that type of thing, then I'll help you get more into like the detailed parts of your skincare, um, which is why it's kind of hard to give like blanket recommendations with skincare because everybody's looking for something different. However, there are a couple categories that I feel like everyone should invest in. That is a hydrating or barrier serum, sunscreen, moisturizer, or eye cream. So that's what we're going to talk about. First thing is a product that went viral this year and actually deserves it, which is the Soothing and Barrier Support Serum from The Ordinary. This is one of those serums that you've seen online that's pink. Like it's hot pink, like it looks like Pepto-Bismol, which is natural. I know it seems like a marketing gimmick, but it, but it's truly part of the formula. Um, this is made with lipids, vitamins, and a couple things for epidermal repair. So it's meant to help repair the top layer of your skin by soothing it. And it claims to work in two hours time. I did a test where I had a ton of redness. My eczema was acting up. I used this, I went for a walk, I came back, and it was significantly decreased. I fully believe this product helps. 
Whenever my skin is irritated or breaking out or anything, I will use this all over my skin. I can use it morning and night. And even though it's pink, it does not look pink on your skin. So don't worry about that. So if you were looking for an inexpensive barrier support serum, look no further. I think everyone should have one because we tend to overdo things with our skin. We get stressed, whatever it is, you should always have something on hand that's gonna help rebuild your barrier, which is also something that this next product does. And I'm so excited that this brand is finally at Sephora. This is the Dew Instant Angel Moisturizer. This is like a three time Berry Best Award winning moisturizer. And it is by far my favorite moisturizer I've ever had. This is my second or third uh, jumbo tube and I will continue to repurchase it forever. This is a lipid rich moisturizer that is definitely meant for people who have drier skin, not great for acne prone skin. It's better for drier, more mature her skin types and it really does help your skin barrier if you're someone who's on tretinoin or retinoids retinol whatever you're using to perhaps help with acne or wrinkles you want to make sure you counterbalance that with something that's really moisturizing and is going to help the breakdown of your barrier slow down so these two together especially mm, so good but obviously if you are not wearing spf it does not matter what you put on at night because you are just breaking down your skin in the sun with your with the uv rays so i have three recommendations for sunscreen today two of them are the exact same and i just wanted to call it out to you because i wanted to make sure that you weren't buying both we all know that the Berry Best Award went to the Summer Fridays Shade Drops. This is such a good SPF. Lightest mineral sunscreen I've ever tried in my life. It feels like your skin is drinking water and literally I've seen every single skin tone use this successfully. So when K-Skin released their Mobe Mineral Sunscreen Drops SPF 30, I was like, oh, I have to try that. It's a lightweight SPF 30. These are the exact same product. I'm not kidding. They are both 1.7 ounces. They are both the exact same price and they are they look identical on the skin. So I just wanted to make sure that you knew that before you go forward with your purchases. Either one is gonna do you good. If you wanna take a closer look at the ingredients and you feel like one is better than the other, go for it. But literally, they're the same, you guys. Like, the consistency, look at that. The feel, the light, breezy feeling of it, it is the same product. I love it, I love them both. Do I need both? Absolutely not. I will use them up, but you know, I'm like, I don't even know which one to repurchase. They're the same everything, same price, same formula, same everything. It's crazy. They even have the same percentage of zinc, 9.4%. Something in the, something ain't right about that. Then of course we have a brand new mineral sunscreen that I was so excited about from In Beauty Project. This literally just came out. This is the Mineral Sun Glow. This is what I have on today. It's broad spectrum SPF 43, PA++++, UVA, UVB, blue light, and antioxidant protection. Comes in two shades, fair to medium and medium to deep. I wear fair to medium. It has 14% zinc oxide. It has oil soluble vitamin C. They have vitamin C in like everything uh, and peptides. It's really, really lightweight. It's a little bit thicker than the um, K skin and the Summer Fridays, but not quite as thick as like, a, I don't know, a super thick sunscreen. This to me kind of reminds me of if you've tried the Hero Cosmetics sunscreen, the orange one, not the green one. It's the same packaging um, and it has that same feel to it, but it doesn't have any orange undertone to it. It's like full, just like a peachy shade. So if you are looking for maybe a shade that will look more skin tone friendly for you instead of the orange that comes from the hero or the green that comes from the, from the hero, try this one. It's completely scentless and I really, really like it. I've been using this one a lot and I think it would be a great one also for vacations because it's just like a super simple bottle you can just throw in your purse. And I love to see some of my favorite brands coming out with SPF. Last but not least in the skincare category, we have our eye creams. I have, again, two that I'm kind of like, these feel so similar, so I wanted to mention it. And one that is my very best that continues to reign supreme. That one is my Ilia Bright Start Activated Eye Cream. This is a retinol alternative eye cream. It has a ceramic base here, so you can apply the product and then rub it in with the ceramic base and it gives you like a nice cooling sensation. This is the only eye cream I've ever tried where I noticed a real difference in my under eyes and it's the one I use every single night. It's a little bit thicker. So when I'm going to pick one out for the daytime, I'm wearing one of these and these are both new. This is the Glossier Full Orbital Eye Cream and this is the Summer Fridays Jet Lag Overnight Eye Serum. Um, they're not the exact same. They don't have the exact same breakdown of ingredients, but they feel really similar on the under eyes where they're just 
really lightweight and hydrating and have like a jelly serum-y consistency to them, whereas the Ilia one is more of a cream. These would both be beautiful under makeup. I really like wearing the Glossier under makeup because it's just got this really nice texture to it. And I also really love the applicator. It's just really easy to pop on and uh, blend in. So I have really been enjoying these little eye creams, even though I would say they're more um, serums and they're great under makeup, highly recommend. Okay, let's do a little quick roundup of hair and perfume. For hair, I wanna make sure I'm not missing anything. I feel like if you go back and look at my Very Best Awards videos, like my hair has changed a lot in the past couple years. I had it really long and brown, then I cut it, then I dyed it red, then I got bangs. Like I'm, I'm just playing around with my look a lot. So the products that I feel I want to continue to mention are the ones that I've used throughout this whole time. So the first one is the last couple months before this, I had really been using, um, doing a lot of slick back hairstyles. And I think that it was damaging my hair. And so finding a gel that would allow me to slick back my hair without the damage was really important. And it was definitely the crown affair, the finishing gel. This is a gel that you can use to slick back your hair and then brush it out afterwards. And your hair actually feels clean after. It's, it's a crazy feeling. It's so good. It is really expensive. So I definitely recommend picking it up in the sale as well as anything else from crown affair. Literally everything from crown affair is good. There's nothing I wouldn't recommend. The only thing that I like don't love is they their, um, their dry shampoo because I'm more of a spray girl than like a it, you, they use a brush to put it on. But everything else from Crown Affair, especially if you have hair like me, which is thinner and fine, highly recommend Crown Affair. Speaking of thin and fine hair, for my heat protection, literally since I tried this, it is the only product I've used for heat protection and that is the Olaplex number no. nine. This is their Bond Protector Nourishing Hair Serum. It's an antioxidant rich serum, protects, softens, and improves manageability for all hair types. It is a heat protectant to up to 450 degrees Fahrenheit and it is a jelly serum. So if you are someone who has thinner hair and you feel like you put oil in it and it immediately gets greasy, this is the kind of heat protectant that you need to try because it's going to give your hair the nourishment that it needs without weighing it down or being too heavy. I use this every single day, whether every single time I wash my hair, whether it's in conjunction with an oil or a spray or whatever, this is my go-to for heat protectant always, always, and forever. Amen. Highly recommend you try it out if you have thin hair. Last but not least, I wanted to, of course, well, I have two two more things. I wanted to mention for dry shampoo, I'm kind of a Batiste girl. I've always been a Batiste girl, but I can acknowledge when a dry shampoo is really good. And the Living Proof dry shampoos are, are top notch. The advanced clean day dry shampoos are always so good. And it's something I always recommend to pick up in the sale because we always need dry shampoo. But I specifically wanted to call out the dry volume and texture spray from them. This is uh, amazing. It gives you a lot of lift, a lot of volume in the hair without feeling too crunchy. It definitely gives you that texture and grit, but it also kind of helps absorb a little bit of grease in the hair. It's kind of like a two in one. And I love how fine the mist is. It's just these, I know aerosol might be bad for you, but I'm something about the Living Proof cans. They just do it for me. They smell so good. And this just gives you like a light airy texture that's not too heavy. And that's what I need again with someone who has fine hair, who doesn't want to put too much product in it. It's your girl. I felt I would be remiss not to mention the fact that all of the, the Dyson products will be on sale during this Sephora sale. My recommendation right now and what I've been using is actually the Supersonic Dryer. It's not even the Air Wrap. I love the Air Wrap. When I had longer hair, it made more sense for me. But with my shorter hair and having bangs, having a really good hair dryer has been life-changing. Having a hair dryer that I can use a round brush with on my bangs and just getting things nice and dry. Like, I don't know how to explain it better than like the Dyson hair products are just so good. And if you haven't tried one of them, highly recommend finding the right one for you, whether it's the air straight, if you have curly hair, if you just have, you know, stick straight hair and you want to stick to that, you could get the dryer. Or if you were looking to add a little bit of volume and learn how to do an at-home blowout, try the air wrap. Like they cannot miss. They are so good. And I just had to mention it because they they are really expensive. Okay, last but not least is perfume. And I'm looking over at my perfume thing because I'm like, my obsession recently has been with Sniffs, Crumb Couture, and Strawberry, a letter from Fleur. None of, neither of them are on Sephora's website. And obviously I have like my go-to favorite perfumes. My signature scent is Clean Reserve Skin. So I'll always recommend that. But again, I'm trying to give you some like new newness in these videos. And this was the one that I felt 
by far the most passionately about. And it is the Find Comfort Body and Hair Fragrance Mist from Rare Beauty. Um, I'll pop in the notes so you can see it, but this is just heaven on a stick. It's such a beautiful scent. It's got a really fine mist. It's safe to use in your hair. This is, oh, I got some in my mouth. This is a scent that I choose to use when I'm at home. I haven't worn it out because I'm really trying to attach it to the idea of warmth, like going to bed, watching TV with my husband, being safe, feeling secure, feeling comfort. And I feel like it's scent association can be really strong. And I have really loved doing that. It really does give you this comforting feeling. It has a little bit of a citrusy scent to it, but also that skin scent, a little bit of like a warmth, mature muskiness to it. I just love that it's not a lavender scent because I feel like every time there's some sort of relaxation style scent, it ends up being lavender. And this is something different and really unique. And I just highly recommend you try it. Um, either if it turns into your signature scent or you do the same thing as me, it has been really, really nice to use this to help myself calm down. I think I got everything. This video is gonna be so long because there was also more things I wanted to talk about, like there are some sets coming out, but I think I'm gonna do, if I feel like there's something I wanted to mention, I'll probably bring it up in a short instead of in a video. I'm probably not gonna be doing a what's in my cart sale video because I don't need anything. I don't know if you noticed that. I really don't need anything. If anything, I will probably stock up on the Rare Beauty Eyebrow Gel and like that's it. I might pick up a couple other shades of the House Labs um, PhD because these are the only two I have and I am obsessed with them. I have a lot of stuff. I don't need that much more stuff. I'd rather help you figure out what's gonna work for you. So if you have questions, if you need a recommendation, please let me know in the comments, but also tell me what you're picking up. I really hope this was helpful to you in learning about some of the newer launches on the market because I know I haven't gotten a chance to talk about all of these. Um, and if there are specific videos that you wanna see about one or two of these products, let me know. I can make a short on it or we can talk about it in a future video. Happy Sephora sale shopping. I hope you have the best cart, the best time. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments and I love you guys so much. I'll see you in the next one soon. Bye.